Rocky Linux released version 9 recently. This video walks through the installation of Rocky Linux 9 on an Intel Nook. In addition to a basic workstation install, I also leverage a developer workstation setup script I found on GitHub. Since I haven't spent much time with the tools included in the script, I won't go into great detail on them. You can see here on his GitHub page a variety of utilities that get installed with the script. Let's get started. Prior to starting this recording, I did the following. Downloaded the new Rocky Linux 9 ISO image for x86 underscore 64 from rockylinux.org slash download. Next, I created a boot disk using Belina Etcher. If you choose to use this software, only download it from their official site, belina.io, or their GitHub repo, github.com slash belina-io slash etcher. Once Belina was done creating my USB, I plugged it into my Nook and powered on. Now that Rocky has booted up, we need to go ahead and select our language. Of course, I'll select English here and click on Continue. Next, we need to review our installation summary. I'm going to select Workstation here. Just use the default Workstation packages and click Done. Next, we need to take a look at our installation destination since we had some red text there. Now, I do have two drives in my Nook. So I want to select the smaller one, the Toshiba. Okay, I'll click Done here. Now it is warning me that I don't have much free space here because I did use this before. So I'm going to reclaim the free space and delete all. And then I'll go ahead and confirm with Reclaim Space. Now I do need to set a root password. So I'll go ahead and get that typed in here and I'll confirm it. I don't want the root account locked, so I'll make sure to unlock that. And I do want to allow SSH login with password, just for now. Next, I'll go ahead and create a local user account, and I'll just go ahead and call it Dimension Quest. I do want the account to be administrator, otherwise I won't be able to do sudo commands. Go ahead and get the password in here, confirm that. And click Done. Click Done a second time, because I'm using a pretty simple password. All right, no more red warnings in here, so things are looking good. My network is connected. And time and date, it's got the right time zone, so I'll go ahead and click on Begin Installation. Okay, I'll get logged back in here and we can see that we have a little tour. I'll go ahead and click through here real quick. It just gives a simple overview of the uh, desktop operating system. And we'll go ahead and get that closed now. Okay, so in order to access anything, we need to either click Activities or click the Super key. For those of us Windows users, that would be your Windows key. Now, it looks like I've got some updates here, so I want to make sure that I get everything up to date before I start proceeding with uh, customizing the workstation. Oh yeah, let's take a look at our Wi-Fi. Yep, we do see Wi-Fi networks. So the Wi-Fi card in the Intel Nook was recognized and it's operating properly. All right, looks like the updates are done, so we will go ahead and get the system restarted now. Okay, getting logged back into the desktop. Okay, our software updates have been installed. We'll go ahead and get that closed out now. And we can close out the software manager. We hit the super key, open up our terminal. And let's go ahead and bring this into full screen and zoom in a little bit so you can actually read the text. There we go. Now let's make sure that we have Git installed. Yep, looks like we do. So now we can go ahead and clone the repository. 
github.com slash david dash else slash developer dash workstation dash setup dash script. Okay, that came down really quick, so we'll go into that directory. And we'll take a look at what's in there. Now, the first thing we need to do is customize the install.sh script. So let's go ahead and open up that with your favorite editor. And we'll go down here to the packages. There we go, RPM packages to install. Now, I do like Visual Studio Code, so I'm going to uncomment that. Okay, everything else here looks pretty good, but I do want to get my favorite terminal installed here. So let me go ahead and get Terminator added. I'll put that right underneath Kitty. Okay, that should be about all I need to do. So I'll close that out and save it. And we'll try executing the script here. Oh, yep, we got to do that as sudo. So let's go ahead and do a sudo. There we go. Now this is going to take a while. It, it does want your password for sudo operations. That has finished up. So next we need to do the install dash binaries script. So let's um, confirm the file name there. We'll just do an ls on our folder here. Oh, wait a minute. It's not dot sh. Let's just do an ls dash ahl. We'll list everything in here. That's right, it's a dot bash. Okay, let's take a look at this. I want to point something out in here, that's why I'm editing it. Now if you scroll down a little bit here, you can see under the download section, we've got gh release download. Now this gh command, that is the GitHub CLI. This is an official CLI that is released by GitHub. That previous script that we ran has installed it for us. So when we try to execute the install binary script, it's going to see that we need to authenticate against GitHub. So don't be alarmed. This is normal. It is a legitimate tool. Let's go ahead and execute the command here. And there we go. We would need to do a gh space auth space login. Then we choose where we want to log in. We want to go to github.com. This would work with an enterprise edition as well. Now I want HTTPS and I want to use my credentials. So now it's providing me with a code. Let's get that copied to our clipboard. And once we have it copied, just hit enter and the script will open up our default browser right to the GitHub page so that we can paste in our code. Now, if you weren't already authenticated to github.com, you may have to log in first. All right, so we should be done with that. So we can close our browser and we can see that we're logged in now. So we'll rerun the script now that we're logged in and we can see that, hey, look at that. It's installing Pandoc, Shellcheck, and several other different utilities. Okay, that Dino bit took quite a while. I'm glad I had the ability to speed things up. Now we'll run our final script here, and that's a setup.sh. This gives us an opportunity to rename our local system, our host name. And it will do a slight tweak on our display configurations in case we're using 4K or less monitors. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get rebooted and we are good to go. So we can see here we have several applications that are not just your standard applications. These were installed with the script. So you may find some of these quite useful if you're a developer. I personally, uh, my favorites in here are Terminator, of course, that's why I added that. So I'll add that to my favorites and Visual Studio Code. So there we go. That's about it for today's video. Hope you found this useful and uh, have a great day. Mm -hmm.